bright duty every student matters hello students now let's talk about the emergence of gandhi now you must have heard the term here that is gandhi the name here not term the name here that is gandhi mahatma gandhi who is also the father of our nation correct students so let us talk about this period in which gandhi ji he emerged as an important leader as a national leader in our country now students before starting this i would like to ask something right you have to think in your mind we were discussing about the three phases of the indian national movement now do you remember that part yes now if i ask you what were those three phases can you answer that question definitely you have to answer yourself so the first phase here was the moderate the second phase the extremist phase or let's say the radical radical phase the assertive nationalists who were uh, part of this phase also or the revolutionaries who came later on and the third phase that was of gandhian era you remember that part right so we have talked about these three phases now initially students in previous topics we have discussed about the moderates and the assertive nationalists right we also talked about the early revolutionaries who emerged in the early 20th century correct now here students we are going to talk about the gandhian era somewhere from 1916 and after that we see that the gandhian era it started in our country right students now talking about the emergence of gandhi let's have a look at some of the important facts of gandhi ji related to him and also how did he become a national leader a person who led full fledged mass struggle in our country who mobilized the mass struggle mass movement in our country against the british government and what were his ideologies let us try to understand those parts here now mohan das karamchand gandhi the full name here he was born on october 2 1869 and today we celebrate october 2 as a national holiday on the birth of gandhi ji we call it as gandhi jayanti and he was born at porbandar in kathiawar that is a place in gujarat right now this is a young image of mohandas karamchand gandhi he was the son of devan of a small state here in porbandar so basically his father's name was karamchand gandhi and he derived his name from there okay now his father was a political figure and he was the diwan okay his mother putli bai she was a very religious lady now let us talk about his early life a bit here now gandhi ji in 1888 he went to england to study law and later on he became a lawyer in 1891 he came back to india then again he went back to south africa to practice law now gandhi ji he was a person who went to south africa to practice law but he witnessed a lot of things there that completely changed his perspective and he all together introduced a new ideology the practice that he did there in uh, that he got indulged into in uh, south africa and today we call it satyagra the ideology of satyagra now students here in south africa we see that the english people they were now now when gandhi ji he was in south africa he saw the discrimination that the indians had to face along with the black people in south africa so the white european settlers who were there in south africa they imposed some racial discrimination some laws were imposed and practices that were being followed that were discriminatory in nature so basically gandhi ji witnessed that and he was very much horrified very much scared when he saw the situation of indians who were living there right so here he tried to raise his voice against the discrimination the racial discrimination that was based on the color of the skin okay students 
So, by being shocked with the racist policy of South African government, the European settlers there, the white settlers there, who thought themselves as the superiors and everyone else inferiors, right? So, basically, with this ideology, here he decided to fight against the injustice, okay? And there were various actions that he took place there, but uh, that he initiated there, not took place, but he initiated there. But one thing that he started practicing there was the whole idea of Satyagraha. Now, this term is really important when we are talking about Gandhiji students because he introduced the whole concept of Satyagraha. It has a very deep meaning hidden inside. Now, when we are talking about Satyagraha, what does this mean? Now, if you divide the words here, the word here, Satya and Agra, it means holding firmly onto truth. Or in simple terms, we call it as truth force. Now, Gandhiji, he believed in two things, two weapons that was really important. And the first one was the non-violence and the second one here is truth. So, it is only through ahimsa, non-violence and truth that a person could win his enemy. Okay? And he wanted everyone to follow the path of Satyagraha. Hold firmly to the truth so that they can help their enemies to see the cause that they are fighting for. Very deep meaning here students. And this was the ideology introduced by Gandhiji in South Africa. So, he led many satyagras there where through passive resistance, not passive resistance. So, Gandhiji in South Africa, he organized many satyagraha movements, right? So, here through non-violence and following the path of truth, he decided to challenge the government there, the injustices that were being done there, okay? So, he organized the Natal Indian Congress and mind you students, here he was fighting for the cause of Indians, the racial discrimination that the Indian workers who had come from India, basically from Tamil Nadu and some other regions as well. These people, they went as indentured workers, they went as uh, uh, laborers, right? And they had to work in South Africa in plantations and elsewhere, okay? So the conditions were quite grim there and therefore he joined the Natal, uh, Natal Indian Congress Apart from that, he also joined in the Boer Wars that is related to the South African history that was against the government there. So, we see that many actions were taking place in South Africa as well under Gandhiji. Okay, so this was his contribution there. Now, it was in the year 1915 that Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, he finally returned back to India. Now, students... During this period, 1915, what was happening in our country? Now, in our country, there was a situation of turmoil. There was a situation of chaos. Why? Because we have learned about the Surat split in 1907. We saw that the moderates and extremists, they were at two ends now. And they were fighting against each other. There was a lack of leadership in our country. And people, they were really confused as in whom to follow. Right? in whose directions they should walk, right? So, therefore, there was this feeling of chaos, there, there was this situation of turmoil, situation of chaos in our country. But the whole scenario changed once Gandhiji, he came back to India and he took interest in the politics of our country. And for this, he decided to go across the country, visit different places and try to understand the situation there. Right? By meeting the common people. Okay? So, when he came back to India, he established Sabarmati Ashram at Ahmedabad. So, at first we see that Satyagraha Ashram was made, was established and later it was shifted to Sabarmati. Now, we call it as Sabarmati Ashram at Ahmedabad. That happened in the year 1917. But it was fine in 1915 that the Satyagraha Ashram was established okay so here are two points that you must remember now finally what was happening in 1916 onwards we see that Gandhiji he started 
moving to different places, meeting different people, right? So here we see that there was a man whose name was Rajkumar Shukla. Now he was an important act activist from Bihar and when he came to know that Gandhiji has arrived and he was at a meeting somewhere, he went on to meet him there, okay? Now, it was in 1916 that he went on to, uh, to explain him the situation of peasants in Bihar. The indigo plant, the indigo planters, the European planters who were causing damage to the lives of the peasants living in Bihar, in Champaran. Okay, students? Now, once Gandhiji heard that news, he decided to come to Bihar and visit Champaran. Okay? In Champaran, here we see that finally in 1970, Gandhiji, he formally enters into the Indian politics by starting his first Satyagra movement here. Okay? So, he traveled to Champaran and he organized the Satyagra movement fighting for the oppressed indigo peasants. Uh, now, here what was happening? You must be wondering what is this indigo? Now, indigo, it was a commercial crop, students, commercial crop that the European planters, they forced the peasants to grow on the lands, okay? And the peasants, they were not able to grow other crops such as rice, wheat, that was important for their daily needs. And also, they had to pay a lot of dues to these European planters. So, the condition of the peasants was quite bad here. And therefore, they needed the help. And when they saw this as the perfect opportunity that Gandhiji should lead their movement, so Gandhiji, he was very much into the movement and he organized the Satyagraha movement in Champaran and fought for them. So therefore, we see that after, afterwards, the act was passed that was in the favor of the peasant somehow. Again, in the year 1918, we see that he visits two other places, that is Khera, okay, Khera district of Gujarat and another one, uh, one is in Ahmedabad. So, in 1918, we see that another Satyagraha was organized on the behalf of peasants in the Khera district of Gujarat. Why students? Because they wanted the relaxation in the revenue payments. Now, in the Khera district of Gujarat, what happened there? These peasants, they had to face the crisis, the epidemic crisis and the crop failure after that. Okay? And therefore, the revenue that the British government was demanding was quite high and it was impossible for these peasants to pay back the revenue. Right? The huge amount. So, therefore, they were resisting the British government here. When Gandhiji knew about the situation, he went there as well and he organized the Satyagraha against the British government. Apart from that, again in 1918, Gandhiji, he went to Ahmedabad to organize a Satyagraha movement for the cotton mill workers for their working conditions. Now, here what are we seeing students? Gandhiji, he came to India in 1915 in January. Now, he also made the uh, Sabarmati Ashram established the Satyagra Ashram that later came to be known as Savarmati Ashram, right, where he started staying. Apart from that, we see that in 1970 and 1918, he started organizing Satyagra movements because he wanted to instill this ideology among the common people, this practice of truth and non-violence, okay. And he wanted that only through Satyagra, People should try to challenge the British government. Okay. So here he was totally against the means of violence. And somehow people started recognizing, recognizing him as Mahatma. Okay. And that is why he got the name Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, students. Now his greatest, uh, greatest achievement was his campaign against untouchability. We all know students that in our society, untouchability existed. Right? And these people, they were known as the untouchables. 
the lowest uh, the group that was at the lowest rung in our society in the social hierarchy so he decided to give them another name and that name was harijans okay so children of god harijans if you divide this word hari and jan it means that children of god so he also started the journal harijan and he wanted that there should be complete abolition of untouchability in our society he also promoted the charka and the spinning wheel that became the flag of congress party charka as we all know it was very much important and the spinning wheel again for khadi clothes okay